Okay guys, um, welcome. This is going to be part two of Gyotaku in your fish. <clears throat> so what I have here is I've got a easel. You don't have to use an easel. You can just do this on any kind of flat table that you have. Um, normally they have boards and stuff that they sell at the art stores, but you know what? Um, if you're just doing this as a hobby, you know, maybe you're just experimenting and stuff, there's no sense in buying that kind of stuff. All you gotta do is just get some piece of cardboard. I've got some of these old shipping boxes um, and you get a couple of clips and you just clip your print, your paper to the cardboard just to kind of keep it steady and um, the cardboard will keep it nice and straight and keep it from wrinkling and stuff and that's it. Like I said, I have an easel because I do this um, a little bit more regularly but you can always just put this flat on a table and work on it. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a cup of water you're gonna need uh, a few different paint brushes and I just this is just some examples of what I got and your ink your paint you know this is my uh, tray I've got white and black over here and uh, I'm gonna mix another color for the eyeball but um, that's that's all you really need in terms of for papillos and luas when you get into other fish you can use other colors and stuff but um, the paint tray you can always just use a paper plate once again, it's cheap, you don't have to spend money on it. Uh, it's all about maximizing what you've got, right? So, okay, so to start, this has been, uh, I've had it sitting around the house for a while, so it's nice and dry. What we're gonna do is, I'm going to mix some paint. So I'm gonna take some black, put it over here. Gonna mix. What I'm gonna do is I'm taking this black and this white and I'm trying to get it close to this color but not too dark. Um, you know if you think of this color you just want it like maybe a, a step or two darker. So you just add the white on the black until you get it Kind of like a, because this is actually more like a gray. Even though we use black paint for this, when you when you're done printing it and stuff like that, it actually comes out more like a gray. So that's kind of where we want to be at right there. Is this gray area? Get rid of all this. Uh, we just want to mix it up nice. This is I'm using acrylic ink or paint. This is what you can find on my website. The sets that I'm selling is this type of acrylic paint. Acrylic is good because it's water soluble. So that means that. I can also put this in water, my brush, and I can dilute it with the water. So, here we go. First thing I like to do is, I like to start off with the, the top, get the general outline going, and then I start working into the details. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of, when you print papillos and stuff like that, woos, anything you print, <clears throat> you don't get a nice crisp line. So I'm just giving this thing a little bit of a definition, a little bit of a, a line on the edge. So that way it defines your fish better okay. and so I'm as I need paint I'm taking it from the paint and I'm tracing it I'm uh, dipping it in water okay. and I'm just kind of slight you know just softly Going over with the edge. I'm not pressing hard, I'm not smashing the brush, I'm just doing the edge.
lips or the jaw section. I'm doing a little of, I don't trace the whole entire thing, but I do do a little bit of a outline on it. And then we're coming to the gills on the gill plate. This is where I would make it, let me put this in piece of better. There we go. This is where I would um, uh, kind of trace it, but slightly. So what I'm doing is I'm diluting it with water so it's not so heavy. That's the beauty when you use a, the acrylic is that you can do that. You can use water to thin it. It's almost like using um, oils and how they use thinner. When I get to the belly, I'm just going to do a slight line if you can see, but it's not as dark as the top. Um, and the reason being is that I, if you want to give your fish some definition, the way it, things work is when light hits something, any kind of object, it there's a light source and you've got a shadow from the light source. And so in this case, what we're doing is, is we're going to make it a little bit darker on the top and as you come down it lightens and it gives it that sort of 3D effect as if the fish is real. Once again, this is just kind of um, a basic, you know, how to your own fish and, um, you know, you got to experiment, play around, uh, but it's, e it's easy enough where I think anybody can pick up a brush, um, do some prints at home, and it would look good to hang up in their house. Okay, so I'm going to get another brush here. Give me a second. There we go. Where was I? Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the scoots. And how that works is, how that works is you're going to make these sort of uh, like arrows and you're going to have them point in the direction of the tail. And as you get away from the tail, they're going to get smaller, a little bit more frequent. As you get towards the tail, they're going to get bigger. And you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And we're going to go in and we're going to do some shading later and stuff, but initially that's what it's going to look like. And that just helps give our tail some definition. Um, you can see how faint the tail came out from our print. And like I said, when we were doing our, if you watch part one of the video, when we were doing our print, you want to make sure that when you're doing the initial print, you want to make sure that um, you get a good amount of ink on the tail because the tail just, for whatever reason, it just does not hold um, the paint well. So uh, you just want to get a little bit more ink on that when you're doing the the first part of the print, yeah. We're done with that now. Okay. Just kind of giving the fins a little bit more definition there. Some water.
just kind of going over the gill plates, but just faintly, just giving it that definition, because like I said, when you print it, it gets a little diluted. For what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see this, I'm using a flat brush. And the, the good thing about that is when you actually press down or you can go straight on, it'll give you a nice clean edge. When you go out, want to get into something where you need the paint to spread, you can use a brush like this where when you press down, it actually spreads down. You can actually see it kind of pushing down. And that's going to be for something where you need the paint to kind of spread out a little bit more. But right now, I'm just trying to keep it contained so I need a flat brush. And then as you do these edges, you can kind of come down from the edge to give it a little bit of definition. See, like that right there. Uh, let's see. There we go. <clears throat> a little bit of water there. Let's add some water. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do the shading by the gill plates a little bit. Or I'm gonna add some definition by the gill plates. Hold on. And all I'm doing is adding the shading where the edge was, it's darker, and as I go away from that edge, it's getting lighter, so I'm putting less pressure. Okay, now you can see how the gill plates are standing out a little bit. Okay, let's see what's next. And okay, now we're gonna do the top. Um, so for the top, same principle. We're going to start off dark at where we did our outline, right? And as we move away from that line, we get lighter. Yeah, you can see all I'm doing is just kind of faintly Taking some of the ink, so you can see the water, and I'm kind of spreading it around. And the reason why you make this transition from dark to light is so your shadowing looks natural. Yeah, if you just did it like one solid color, it wouldn't look so great because in real life, that's not how things look. Yeah, you know, they're it gets dark to light smoothly so that means that you have to make this nice transition and once you got some once you got it to where you want it and that's pretty close but you know I'm going to go a little lighter you 
you can start, what I like to do is I start making some downward strokes. Okay, so, and what that does is it gives it its shape. Yeah. Starts to shape the fish. See how things are shaping now. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. And like I said, you do this to your preference. Uh, if you want to try and get it really detailed and take it to the extreme and experiment with uh, a lot of detail you know by all means um, try it out you know what I suggest is when you are initially doing your print if you're just starting off and you're not too comfortable is to do a bunch of prints at first so you take your fish and do a lot of prints so meaning you know make three four five of them if you can because you know uh, once you start painting this thing if you mess up somehow and uh, when you're first starting off you know you're gonna do things that you might not like uh, just how it was done or how you painted this or it was too dark or whatever when you make a bunch of prints at first you don't have to worry about after the fish is all cut up you know having to worry about oh I need another one to start off with because once you're done you know first doing that first initial print that like we showed you in part one you know that's it I cut this fish up already I can't go back and reprint this guy you know you get like you know whatever you printed at the time is what you've got to work with so if you want some second chances so to speak you want to be able to um, you know experiment and do different things then you, sh you should definitely do at least two or three prints when you're first printing the fish that, that's my recommendation yeah okay so you can see how the lines are coming down and I've got some a little darker, a little lighter, and you can see how it's coming along, yeah? Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of dark. Add some shading over here. We're going to take some of our thicker paint, and we're going to... I'm doing the scoots. And you can see how that's starting to come out now. It's starting to kind of pop. Yeah. Okay, we're going to just a little bit of shading, once again, you know, you want it to look natural. I want it to kind of dilute my paint here because it's coming out kind of heavy. Yeah.
bottom, so I'm going to sort of lighten it up on the bottom. Yeah? Coming in with a lighter gray, let's kind of give it a little bit more definition underneath, and I'm going to come up with a darker gray on top. So I'm mixing again the different types of grays we've got going on here. You know, you want it darker or lighter, you just, you add more black or you add more white. So for this particular one, this is only a how-to, so we're just we're not going to go into too much. This is just going to be a real quick um, video. And normally I take a little longer, but here you can see I'm just kind of giving some of these fins some of that definition that it, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of shading right there. Once again, you're just changing the pressure and stuff. And like I said, everybody's got different styles. Um, what you can do is how you want it. Yeah. Like for instance, this white, the white spaces. If you don't like that sort of thing, you can always um, shade and paint um, to your liking. I personally, I like that. I like to see the the character of the fish. Yeah, yeah, reminds me of how the fish naturally was, versus me just putting some nice paint and making it the perfect looking fish, um, like some makeup or something. It's this, you know. I like it to look a little bit more natural. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking some lighter gray and I'm adding it between the dark kind of blackish gray on the fins.
Okay. And then, you know, um, we can go as far as you want with this. You know, it's up to you. We can take this and keep developing this and keep developing this. But for now, this is a nice basic print. I'm going to do the eye. So for the eye, what we're going to do, and that's sort of the finishing touch for me. Once I do the eye, I think I'm just pretty much done. I don't usually do anything else after that other than the signature and how you want to sign it. Okay. Um, so for the eye, you're going to mix some paint, uh, either a yellow and a black, and you're going to get it to a brownish kind of color. Uh, once again, this is all your preference, how you like it. This is the color I'm using right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. It's kind of like a dark mustard. I'm taking some black and I'm mixing it in there and getting sort of a dark kind of mustardy color. Yeah. And we're just going to make a circle. Yeah, where the eyeball is. You don't have to fill in the circle because then we're going to put black inside it. So if you fill it in, it's going to have too much uh, paint. And you're going to have to wait for that paint to dry before you actually do it. Okay? So now I washed my the same brush. Okay? I washed it off. Now I'm going to take the black. Taking the black. Okay? And we're going to do the inner circle, okay? And that's the one where it's actually going to be filled in. All right? So. And just do the best you can, you know, for the circle. I'm going to try and zoom in on the eye so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to take our white. Okay, there's our white paint. We're just going to dab it at the edge of the brush. Just a nice thick globby dab. I don't know if you can see that. I just got a nice dab on the brush. And I'm just going to dot it. I'm going to make uh, two dots, okay, one right there, and one right there, and that's our eyeball. Um, if I wanted to, I could, you know, um, go as far as developing the whole entire eye itself, heel plates, I mean, you can go as far as you want with this thing, you can do shading on all this sort of thing. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. I like the shading, I like the detail, but I like to see this natural print. I like to see the scales. I don't want to see paint all over this whole thing. And this whole thing is just totally developed because then it, it's, I mean, if you're going to paint the whole thing over, you might as well just paint the fish, you know, from scratch. This is a print and you sort of want it to look that way. Um, just as a finishing touch, I'm going to add a I'm going to mix my white with my gray, so it's a light gray. Let me zoom out here. Yeah. And I'm just going to make some, um, some lines. And basically, that is just to give it some, some light. It gives us a light. Yeah. So right on the edge here. that maybe yeah and you kind of just blend it give it some shape it doesn't just look like a line just kind of rub it in there yeah okay we'll do one line on the gill plate. I mean, not the gill plate, the fin. Okay. Once again, this is just a light uh, white mixed with a gray. So I'm using 
that mixture right there, that's flock. Okay. And it sort of just gives it almost like a highlight, yeah? I'm just gonna rub it in there, and that's it. You know, um, that, let me kind of grab a camera. That probably took us about half hour. I'm gonna back out of here so you can see the print. And there you go. Um, that's that's it in a nutshell. I just did a real quick yotaku. It kind of just shows you. You know, um, it's not that hard, yeah? And then what's last is I'm going to stamp it, and I'm going to sign it, and we'll show you the finished product. Okay, thanks a lot. This was uh, part two of our Gyotaku How to Print. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I, I sell the mini Gyotaku kits on my website, luajunkies.com. You can check it out. And... Um, Start printing at home. Okay, thanks a lot. See you guys at our uh, next tackle tip. And uh, there it is. I stamped it. I have it, my own stamp I made. Signed it, and that's our finished print. Okay, so you can get a good sense of how to print, what it looks like. Yeah, let me kind of zoom in here. You can see some of the details that we did. There's the eyeball, the shading on the gill plates. You can see the lighting, our shadowing. There's our scoots. You can see how realistic the scoots look when we put it down like that. It almost looks like an actual fish popping off. There's my signature with my stamp. Okay. And this is a papil. Um, great gift for Christmas present, for family, putting up in your uh, house. Great to do with the kids. Like once again, I said uh, you can pick up my Gyotaku kits on my website, uluojunkies.com. And... Uh, Start experimenting at home with your own fish. Uh, I hope to see pictures of you guys' um, prints. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You can go on our website under the contact section. Shoot me an email. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, this is uh, part two of you talking your fish. Doing the details. Check out our other tackle tips on our YouTube video. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Until we meet again at our uh, next tackle tips. Aloha.